But now, even Oklahoma has outdone itself. Tonight, Oklahoma's Republican Governor Mary Fallon signed a new law which makes you pay a special fee. It will essentially fine people for the crime of using solar power. If you want to use the sun for electricity instead of your local coal-fired power plant, the redder-than-red state Oklahoma government has figured out a way to make you pay for that crime. This bill passed the Oklahoma Senate last month. It passed the Oklahoma House on a vote of 83 to 5 after no debate. And tonight, Republican Governor Mary Fallon signed it. In the House, uh, the bill was actually sponsored by the same guy who wanted to ban marriage for straight people. But while his banning straight marriage idea didn't go anywhere in Oklahoma, his son tax is actually going to become law. It actually became law tonight. This idea, however, was not born in Oklahoma. A couple of years ago, the corporate-funded network of conservative state legislators called ALEC uh, started adopting model legislation to try to get as many states as possible to punish people for using solar electricity. They've tried to overturn the standards in states that say that utilities have to get a certain proportion of their energy from renewable sources. And like this bill in Oklahoma, they've tried to tax or fine people who have solar panels on their house and are making electricity that way. So if you're concerned about energy for whatever reason, if you think we ought to be trying to move on from fossil fuels like oil and, and coal and gas and pick more sustainable ways of generating electricity, this is kind of a good news, bad news story, right? Because on the one hand, here's the fossil fuel industry and the reddest state in the union trying to destroy the sun, right? <laughs> trying to destroy any chance of alternative energy taking hold. On the other hand, it's sort of nice that they care, right? Maybe this means that alternative energy, like solar energy, is now viable enough to be an actual threat to the bottom line of the oil and gas and coal industries. They always say it's the four stages, right? First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Well, solar has apparently moved on from being ignored or laughed at, and now they're fighting it. So maybe that's good news for solar, sort of. What's fascinating about this, this Oklahoma move tonight, though, is that it is uh, the first one of these that has worked. Uh, this here is an ad, um, an anti-solar ad, put out by the lobbying arm for the electric utility companies. They've got anti-solar ads because they've been running these anti-solar campaigns in states all over the country. That last ad we were just showing, that was the utility company's trade group. This one here, this one is by Americans for Prosperity, the Koch Brothers Group. Uh, it's an ad against renewable energy in Kansas, trying to make the case that solar energy is just like Obamacare. In Arizona, uh, they came up with a plan to fine people 50 to to $100 every month if you used solar energy. Imagine, solar energy in Arizona. Crazy idea, right? Uh, but the LA Times this weekend had a nice write-up about how Barry Goldwater Jr. Um, and other Republicans not affiliated with the Koch Brothers Networks or, or ALEC uh, joined the effort against the anti-solar bill in Arizona and persuaded in the all-Republican state body that had to rule on the issue uh, to bring the solar user's fee from $100 a month potentially down to $5 a month, a much more reasonable fee to help pay for uh, maintenance and overhead issues on the electric grid. In Kansas, the Koch brothers-led campaign to kill renewable energy in Kansas, that got as far as passing through the Kansas State Senate this year, uh, but they were able to stop it in the House, thanks in part to the fact that having some non-fossil fuel energy is actually a really freaking popular thing. 91% of Kansas, re Kansas residents say they believe future Kansas energy needs can best be met by greater use of renewables. 72% of Republicans, 75% of independents, 82% of Democrats say they all support a bill passed in 2009 that requires Kansas utilities to use renewables to generate at least 20% of their electricity by 2020. Those are, those are huge numbers. Look at that. 75% of independents, 72% of Republicans, 82% of Democrats. That is really, really popular policy, which the utility companies and groups like ALEC and the Koch brothers networks are trying to kill all over the country. They are trying to kill renewable energy in the states, and they have not succeeded anywhere yet except Oklahoma, where they succeeded tonight, and where you will now have to pay a fine if you want to use the sun for power. Here's the question. Did these guys win? Did the utility companies and the Koch Brothers Network and ALEC and all these conservative groups, did they win 
against solar energy? Did they win for the first time tonight in Oklahoma because it's Oklahoma? Because Oklahoma is so far off the freaking ideological chart in terms of its state governance that they don't just refuse to raise the minimum wage, they ban raising the minimum wage, where they see gay people getting married and the reaction is to ban marriage for everyone because the gay people have ruined it. I mean, did, did warming yourself with the sun instead of coal just become a punishable offense in Oklahoma because it's Oklahoma? And what happens there really just doesn't apply to the rest of the country. It's too off the chart. Or is what just happened in Oklahoma tonight? Is it just first? Is Oklahoma the only one? Is it such an ideological standout that it stands alone here? Or was Oklahoma just the first one to fall and these kinds of laws are coming to your state soon? Joining us now is someone who fought one of these laws in another state and won. Kansas, the home of uh, Coke Industries, saw a hard-fought battle this year to hold on to their renewable energy law. Uh, repealing the law went through the state Senate, but it got stopped in the House. How did they stop it in Kansas? Dorothy Barnett is the direct, executive director of the Climate and Energy Project in Kansas. She joins us live tonight from Wichita. Uh, Ms. Barnett, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Rachel, for having me tonight. So uh, Kansas is not Oklahoma level red, uh, but it, it's it's quite red. Uh, why do you think that your side was able to uh, fend off this anti-solar, uh, anti anti-wind legislation? How were you able to win in your state? You know, I would say, Rachel, the, the opportunity for Kansas um, to win on renewable energy really was centered around bringing together a diverse network of partners um, from all walks of life, regardless of whether they were um, in a red state, they all can see the economic benefits of, of the giant wind turbines that are now generating across our state. Uh, we reached out to the, the Koch brothers group tonight, to Americans for Prosperity, about uh, this fight in your state. And um, they told us, the sort of bragged that they've spent $300,000 on this fight so far in Kansas. Uh, they seem sort of excited in their statement to us about the prospects of being able to win this one eventually. Uh, how far outgunned have you felt here? Can you talk a little bit about the resources on both sides of the, of the argument in your state? Sure, sure. So, so the Climate and Energy Project is a very small nonprofit based here in Kansas. We, we don't have a huge budget. We have a small number of staff. What we're fortunate to have are relationships that we've built over the last seven years with a broad group of people in the agriculture, in economic development, in chambers, in um, renewable energy advocates, really all focused around one goal, which is moving clean energy policy forward in Kansas. Um, and so although we were outmanned financially um, to the tune of probably 10 to 1, mm. we were able to have manpower and, and lots and lots of volunteers reaching out to their legislators. When the Koch brothers operate nationally, um, I think that people on the other side of fights from them are getting better and better at identifying their hand uh, in political arguments, being able to identify them and their networks as sort of undeclared funders in some of these fights. Um, in Kansas, which is, of course, the home of Coke Industries, I wonder if that sort of cuts both ways. Obviously, they're a very important employer in the state, very influential, not just with legislators, but with, um, well, with everybody who's, who's, who's touched by their, group, uh, by, by their business group in the state. I wonder if it ends up being um, a more delicate issue in terms of talking about somebody with such deep pockets fighting in those issues in your state when that's also where their home is. It is, it is, it is different um, here in Koch's backyard. Um, but, you know, when people see Americans for Prosperity running patently false TV ads trying to tie renewable energy um, costs to our former governor, Kathleen Sebelius, and to Obamacare, mm. it almost comes, becomes ludicrous. Um, you know, when they, when they bring out um, false information about the cost of renewable energy, um, when, when, when we know for fact, based on documents from our Public Utility Commission, um, that, that the renewable portfolio standards, those green energy mandates, as they like to call them, are not costing Kansans um, the kind of money that, that these ads try to portray. Dorothy Barnett, uh, executive director of the Climate and Energy Project. Uh, your fight in Kansas is becoming sort of a case study for people uh, who are fighting these 
uh, anti-renewable energy things all around the country right now. Thanks for helping us understand your work. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Lots more to come tonight, including a brand new debunction junction tonight, possibly the most awkward one yet. That's ahead. Stay with us.